For my money, Karch was the best player. He could block really well. He passed nails. He could side out all day. He was mentally, you couldn't break him. Uh, he didn't make mistakes. And, um, you know, he was away in the indoors for training in 84 and 88, so he wasn't there a lot of that time. And then when he did dedicate himself to the game, he still, you know, won all those tournaments. And I know compared to you guys who played in 8 or 10 or 12, if you were lucky, a year, you know, he got to play. Oh, I never played in more than 7. Yeah, so it's all a relative thing, you know. Um, But it sure is something, it's... But well, for my money, know, Karch was the best. Yeah, uh, Karch came al- came along at the right time. You know, like I I, I think I said to you that our '64 Olympic team was yeah. a sham, but because of the way they picked the team, and not only that, they the team was only together six weeks before we went to the Olympics, and we had. Roughly half the team hated the other half because we've been competitive for 10 years before that. Right. Bitter competitors. So I'll, I'll tell you why I think Selznick ranks on my list higher than all these other guys. Let's hear it. Okay, in 1956, Gene came back from the world tournament is either Rome or Paris. And he was selected first team all world as a spiker. The first American to, to, to receive that honor. And he was already a dominant force on the beach when he came back. So he was a great hitter. Then, when he came back, He wanted to play like the Europeans. So he left Hollywood YMCA, which had O'Hara and Bills and some names you probably don't don't know. Mm -hmm. But they they had been a perennial uh, force at the Nationals. Probably never worse than second or third. He left that team and put together a team of, uh, well... Bernie was on the team. He was 35. Manny Sines at 5'5", who was a setter. Jack Backer, who was an A player, was the other setter. And I I played opposite Gene. It was my first Nationals. I didn't know anything about the indoor game. And, And from 1957 to 1964, he tried, he, we played, the uh, international system. Mm-hmm. Uh, 1968. Nine, nine, 1958. We played the international system, which meant that you couldn't bring your biggest guy from the back court up to the front court to block. So, the this, this system that Karch is coaching is a major, is, is a slight derivative of what Gene brought over from Europe. So it's my opinion that Gene, the the least credit that he doesn't get any credit for being really the father, if to pick a term, of the indoor game as it's played today. Now, Gene hit with tremendous power. Uh, Dane has an arm like Gene's real quick and a, and a heavy ball. Gene had a better serve because uh, Karcher's serve was a, a little jump floater, which uh, wasn't much of anything at all. Gene had a roundhouse. He didn't jump and hit it overhand with a top spin. He just stayed on the ground and snapped the ball. But it was real effective. Gene was a, a great setter, and he was unparalleled as a defensive player. So, now I didn't see Karch play in his prime, but I saw him play in a few tournaments when he was over 40, and they had then they had the rally scoring, and all he did was dink, because the deal was you're supposed to block the ball at the net. That's what everybody's thinking is nowadays, you have stopped the ball at the net. So, 
that's why, you know, in my personal opinion, from what I've seen, I give the edge to Gene. Now, as I've always said, a personal opinion can never be wrong. It's just what I think. Right. So, it's, uh, plus, we played under, well, I guess Volleyball Magazine had some comments about about um, Dalhauser and how he's now the most dominant player. And you asked Fred Zulich how he would play him. And I liked his answer. But if he had to play, if Dalhauser had to play under our system, no blocking over, no manicured court, then I think the the outcome would not be as everybody would expect. Number one, if Ronnie and I were going to play against Dalhauser, I'm going to serve. I'm going to serve Dalhauser every single ball. Do you want to know why? Because he, you don't know if he could hold up that long. You got it. Just like when Rondo would block. Serve, he's going to block, and he's going to hit then we're going to make him do triple duty. And now if you put him at Laguna Beach, where the sand is like quicksand, running up that hill, or State Beach, running up the hill, or Serrano, where there was a definite, if you were five feet off the net, you were hitting 8-3, 8-4. Now, he's a big guy. He could still hit the ball. But he's not going to hit the angles that he hits now. Because he's like hitting off a hardwood floor. The way they manicure the court. Right. And and when he was playing with Todd, they won a tournament in Southern California one time. And they had to come through the loser's bracket. And this was Todd's quote in the paper. We didn't warm up because we wanted to save our energy. We wouldn't want, didn't want to get tired. Excuse me, get tired over an hour match? You were just warming up. Oh yeah, and and uh, you know if you if you have three of those long matches in a day, which you would have. The semifinal, the quarterfinal, semis, finals, and a double double elimination tournament. You're going to play a lot of volleyball, and and uh, and then again, if he if he had to play at uh, um, Mission Beach or San Diego when it gets windy, he showed at the Olympics this last year that he doesn't do well in the wind. I mean, it it broke his game down. Now, so he's at a disadvantage under my rules. I'm at a definite disadvantage under his rules. Small accord, he's a foot, he's almost, you know, he's nine inches tall, he probably jumps higher. There's no question he jumps higher. And, he's, I, and I've got a smaller space to hit to, and he doesn't need conditioning. So I give him the advantage over Ronnie and I under those conditions. But we have, we have a, a weapon that we never had to use. I'd, I'd have Ronnie block him all the time. You know, so he's not going to get a free net. And Ronnie can get it pretty high. Yeah, I've seen the pictures. I didn't realize he uh, could move, jump that high. Yeah, he's a big jumper. So I mean, again, it's all it's all speculation, and and uh, nobody you know, you're never going to be able to find out. But when someone says, you know, Dalhauser's a guy, do you know that he's only winning thirty and eight, thirty nine percent of the tournaments he plays in? I didn't see the numbers, but I'm sure. I, I, I know you're good at calculating all that stuff. You were the stock. Well, player. I got it. I got it off um, uh, BSAN database, and and uh, the guy who won the biggest percentage 
with Selznick. He won 60% of every tournament, all the tournaments he played in. Karsh Karai only won 44%. So, you know, and so there aren't any statistics like that. So who would you rather have? Some guy in baseball that hit 220 and he's getting five million a year because he can field or a guy like Ted Williams or Stan Musial who hit 380, 390, 400 who's a better baseball player from and, and, and if you take for me from 1960, 1958 to 1968 that 11 year period I won 70% of the tournaments I played in and didn't play in 64 because of the Olympics. And, and your good friend Harry Wilson. Yeah. Boo. And, and, uh, and then if you take first, second, or third, because in horse race, you take first, second, third, and fourth, but I, I just figured the number was first, second, or third. Gene won that, was in first, second, or third place 94% of the time. And Karch, Sinjin was 72, Mingus is 78, Karch was 74. Um, I was 92. It, it pisses Ronnie and I off all the, the, all the accolades that these guys get. And I'm not saying they're not good volleyball players because they are. I'm just saying that the guys that started this whole racket could play at, at an outstanding level for a long period of time. And not like they say in Volleyball Magazine, it was, it was just a fad and a lifestyle. And we weren't that good of athletes. Do you remember the game or uh, that you played against Mangus when he served a sky ball? Or you served a sky ball? And uh, it was like 10 feet <laughs> outside? <laughs> and it was coming down on the lady's head? Yeah, 10 feet out of bounds, right? So what, what did he do? Uh, it wasn't 10 feet, but it was 5 feet, 6 feet out of bounds. Yeah. Sure, I was playing with Butch May against uh, Tommy and... Uh, Jimmy. Shamalas and, and Jimmy. And we were in 13-11. We were in the loser's bracket. He's playing with uh, Shamalas and Mingus were playing against um, Butchie and I. And I served a sky ball. Now, I, you know, I didn't have a great sky ball, but it was, it, no question, it was going to bounce out of bounds. And it was coming right down on this gal's head who had a baby in her hand, in her arms. And he reached up and caught it before it hit her. I said, point. He said, what do you mean? I said, well, you touched it. He said, but I was going to hit this girl on the head. I said, it's a point. You're supposed to let the ball bounce. Well, that did him in. He never got, they never got another point. You taught him well. And he they talks about that a lot. Oh, he loves that. He and he loves the first time and him and Shamalis came up and played against you guys on the A court and tested themselves, the young lions against the ruling yeah. lions. Well, and you know, Ronnie and I were after them for quite some time to come up and play against us because they're down on the B court and they're beating everybody down there. And I, Ronnie and I, both said to him, "You got to come up." and play us. Now, we're beating better players than they're beating, and we're doing the same thing. We're beating everybody we play. And it took, I bet you we cajoled him, them, for three or four months see, before they came onto the court. And then I did the 8-0 and next, you know. But my opinion of that is, taught him a lesson. He got some grit after that. And he got, had a lot of grit for the rest of his career. 
Absolutely. I mean, he uh, he hated to lose so badly that he. Uh, who better could he have competed against than you guys to teach him that? And you in particular, and then Von Hagen with his dedication to the sport and fitness. Well, I told I, I two years ago, SC opened up um, three sand courts on their campus, and. They invited me down to be the kind of the marshal, and I said, "These, the, the, one, they, they played four men." And I spoke to them briefly, and I told them, "Play as much volleyball as you can, and play as, get, as good as play against as many good players as you can. Always play up, because if you play down, you never gonna learn anything." Von Hagen said, "You used to get frustrated when the." Uh when you guys had a tournament coming up like on the weekend and some other team that would come up to challenge you on the A-court wasn't any good, you didn't even wait to say the 8-0. You said it before the game even started. 8-0. 8-0. <laughs> and then you'd, well, you'd thrash them like a sock in a dryer. I don't remember doing that, but I don't doubt that I, I would have done it. See, because I felt... And I, you know, and I think I got a little bit better a player when I first started playing, which was pretty quick. I always felt if I beat you, if you played me ten times on the beach during the middle of the week, and I beat you every time, that if I drew you in the tournament, you wouldn't expect to win. Because I beat you all the time on the weekdays. Just like you told Stephus at that dinner that night, you're like, "Well, who cares? You're out to That's beat right. him and win." And I think he That's took exactly that to right. heart too. Well, he had, he had, he had a bad reputation because he wasn't friendly. You know, he didn't pal around with all the beach players. I told him when he told me that. I said, "So, so what?" You know, I lived about. A mile off the, uh, a mile from Serrano Beach, and nobody knew where I lived, including Von Hagen. I had an apartment up there on 10th Street, and 1st Street and Cliffs were, uh, past the 1st Street was the beach. And nobody knew where I lived. But, you know, I just, it was, a, it was a business, as far as I was concerned. And your business was winning. You know, a business that I thoroughly enjoyed, but it was a business. Oh, Von Hagen said he was afraid of you at first. He was a what? Afraid of you at first, because he didn't want to make yeah. a mistake. Uh, in fact, I was after him probably... for probably a year to play with me because I was tired of Selznick not putting forth an effort I mean if we played at State Beach he always wanted to win State Beach because that was his court right but you know we ended up in the losers bracket and we lost the teams in, in the winners bracket that three years before we wipe off the map and then we get in the loser's bracket and he didn't like to lose though he brought his A game and uh, we came to the loser's bracket and went one tournament four or five times lose the first round I remember in Laguna Beach my second tournament with my first tournament with him with Gene was uh, 50, 58 at Santa Barbara. And we get to the finals and we play a guy named Barry Brown, who is 6'5", basketball player from, from Stanford, and Mike O'Hara. Two guys that are not known, they could pound the ball, but they were not known for being able to pass and set. 
we played him in a gale. And those two guys passed every ball and set every ball on the net. So they beat us. The next time we play them, we're in the loser's bracket, and the loser's going to get fifth place because we lost the first round. But we beat him that time. It, but you know, playing with Gene, there were times he just didn't care. Now, he wanted to win eventually, but, you know, he the, the, the Laguna Beach match that we lost the first round, I gave him a perfect set, and he dinked it. And both guys, you must have thought it was a $1,000 bill because they were there so quickly, either one of them could have gotten it. See, that's what we're now in the loser bracket. <laughs> yeah, that would be frustrating. I don't blame you. But, uh, he was a great partner. And, and we, we covered, we always had three quarters of the court covered. There's a picture that Dane's posted a couple of times. We're, we're playing, uh, I know who the hitter is. I'm not sure where it was. Guy by the name of Mike Heiger, who was a good jumper, and he, his partner was a guy named Henry Hitchcock. And he's hitting the ball cross court, and Gene and I are both moving almost in synchronization, left foot in front. You know, I mean, we're both going to the spot where the ball's going to be hit. And, you know, our, um, I, my philosophy is you play defense like there's a rope on you. You cover three-quarters of the court all the time. 